that's another year done for the runner beans. Is it just me or do they seem to be lasting quite long this year? I think we've probably had quite a mild autumn so far. I'd say that we're just uh, dipping a toe into November now. It's, uh, it's unusual to see these guys still so green. Unusual to see these guys still so green. Bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh dear, I'm going to strip the rest of this frame down now and look for some other jobs to do. Hi guys, we've jumped forward now, it's November the 5th, uh, it's been really cold actually, it's been uh, good for us last night, it's been a frost last couple of nights, it's bonfire night as well over here where we celebrate some bloke trying to blow up parliament, uh, it was unsuccessful and then he got hung drawn and quartered, um, which yeah, something to celebrate isn't it, yeah, we celebrate it just by having a few fireworks and uh, some mushy peas, anyway, <laughs> I digress, frost last night, it's done these dahlias in as you can see, they've gone from green to black, they're done now for the year. Now dahlias, I don't know if you've ever grown them on your plot, but a beautiful flower, uh, make a nice cut flower as well. Loads of different designs as well, from tiny little delicate to big dinner plate size ones. Um, brings me back to these now. What they will do, they are uh, perennial. They grow a tuber underground uh, where the plant stores loads of starches and energy for uh, growing again next year. So um, the point now, obviously I'm gonna cut down the tops, so whether to leave them inside or whether to lift the tubers and try and store them. Here in Nottingham it's quite, uh, we get quite mild winters, it can depend every single year. If you're going to get a really hard winter with loads of rain, um, they probably won't do too well and they might not survive. I'm going to leave these in the ground but uh, I will lift one and show you what you can do if you want to keep them as well. Dead dahlia. Another thing that's an option with these guys is um, inside these flower heads you will find seed. Um, so you could have a go at saving some of that as well, seeing if you can regrow them for next year. There's quite a lot of uh, paper moving material in there, but uh, there will be seeds as well. I don't know if that will make that out at all. But you can see the little, uh, maybe, the little seeds in there. So that's another way of propagating those for next year. So there's that dahlia bed clear now. As you can see, I've dug up one of the tubers just so you can have a look at it. And look. One of the last flowers as well, and that's on its way out. Oh, there we go. As you can see, you've got sort of these little uh, nodules here. That's where all the energy is stored so that the tuber can survive over the winter. Obviously, if it gets too wet or too cold, these things can die. Um, so what I'm going to do, personally, here in the Midlands, I get quite a good success rate, unless it's a disgusting winter. Uh, these guys should survive under winter, or at least the majority of them. But if you are in a very cold place somewhere where it gets very waterlogged or where the ground freezes, you can take these, dry them out and then put them for storage. Um, you're probably best having a look on the best way to store them, but I think you can put them in sawdust and uh, sand, uh, perlite, things like that. Just anything to keep them uh, nice, but you've got, I know you've got to dry them out first. Um, but I'm going to replant this one. I just wanted to give you a look at it in all of its knobbly glory. And then uh, what I'm going to do also is um, give this a good mulch as well, so that the tops, oh god I've just kicked you, so that the tops where I've trimmed them off they're going to be buried under compost hopefully, just some spent compost from the pots in the greenhouse that'll help protect them a little bit over the winter. Hopefully we'll get some more flowers next year. Oh. There we go, look, that's that bed all now covered over, that's my dahlias, uh, hopefully we'll see those again next year. Moving over onto this one, that had me marigolds and there's a few dahlias at the back there. Um, but this box on the floor here is what I want to talk about now. Well, I've been shopping, uh, it was grocery shopping but um, I got a little bit distracted as I'm sure you can all relate to. You know, you go out for a uh, tin of beans and something like that and you come back with um, gardening related products and sorry I'm very easily distracted. So I bought these ones here, this is uh, Aldi, as you can see, £3.49 there, tubulip, tubulip, tubulip collection, um, tulip collection there, as you can see they look beautiful, so I want to try and get those in the ground now and hopefully we'll be rewarded with some lovely colour come springtime. Look at those beauties. There's actually, it says, um, 
It says 20 on the front, but I've had a look through the box. The box is a bit beat up, so I don't know if they had a problem. Um, but I've ended up with 39 in there, so um, I can only assume that there's been uh, some sort of a cock up. But here's the, uh, here's the little tulips. Ta -da! Cut those pointy end up, flat end down, about four inches under the soil and about four inches between the bulbs. I'm going to get them in this bed right here now. Shall I put them in that one? Shall I put them in this one? I'll put a tulip in the ground if it grows. That is nice. But put them in this bed, please. Uh, I was a bit biased that because I decided to go this way anyway. Anyway, let's do it. Okay, the plan is, in this bed here, obviously I've still got my dahlias underground. But if I put some tulips in, this is what I'm thinking here, um, is if I put the tulips in, because they're a spring flower, they'll come up, I'll get tulips, and the dahlias will come up a little bit later in the year and I'll get dahlias and it'll be a nice succession of colour hopefully they won't interfere with each other anything like that you know so I don't know I'm going to do it anyway you know what I mean with um, with all your flowering bulbs really you want to try and get them in before the ground gets really cold in winter so November December they say is the best um, yeah just get them in the ground they'll be able to get the roots away and then they won't rot off or get any real problems hopefully Unlike me, I'm getting covered in flies. And there we go. So that's dahlias and tulips in there now. Not very vegetably, I know, but um, certainly be uh, absolutely beautiful and just tucked away in this corner of the plot as well. Behind me brassica cage, they'll look lovely. As you can see, the uh, asparagus ferns now, they've all started to yellow off and die down. And uh, as the wind and everything else picks up, they're going to start rocking. As they start rocking in the wind, it's going to uh, potentially damage the crowns underneath. I'm just trying to find... Do you see where that one's been rocking and rolling in the wind? It's actually started to dig a hole and that'll actually wiggle and potentially damage the crown that these come from. So, anyhow, I'm going to chop all of these off now, just to ground level, compost them, give them a damn good mulch and then they'll be good for next year. So, here's the state of the plot anyway, November the 5th. You can see all the sunflowers and everything out of here, they're gone. That was where I had my brassicas, they're gone. Uh, what did I have in this bed here? Come on, it wasn't that long ago. Oh yes, I had some uh, more brassicas and some courgettes and there was a couple of uh, corn plants, weren't there, at the front, sweet corn. Uh, what was there? Oh yes, strawberries, a couple of kale bushes that blew over in the high winds earlier this week. Got my thyme in my mint. And this one leak as well. Do you remember I got the allium leak miner? Um, well, that's one I just cut it off sort of towards ground level and it seems to have recovered quite well. So that was just an experiment. The other ones have gone because they were really bad. But yeah, I've cut that one off and he seems to be clear of it now. Obviously it's well out of breezing season for those guys, so hopefully we're grub free. Over here I've been having a bit of a clear up. I've been trying to get these Jerusalem artichokes out of the ground. Now, these things have just grown absolutely wild. I dug probably two bucket loads out at the start of the year. Uh, I thought that I'd got them all, but as you can see from all the stems sticking up, see the sort of yellowy stems, that's all the Jerusalem artichokes. Absolute nightmare, trying to get all of those out and they are spreading. That started from about three tubers. So if you are going to grow these guys, really try and contain them, because they go everywhere. The rest of the green that you see in there is lupins. I'm just wondering, mulling it over in my mind, whether or not to dig up those to free that bed up. Obviously along this back edge here, I've got a lot of lupins. So I went a bit looping crazy the last couple of years, a lot of these have self-set. Um, so it's just a case, you know, am I keeping them, am I getting rid of them? It'd be lovely to have this bed clear for veg. Um, but I don't know, you know, part of me is like thinking maybe. But then again, if I want to get all them Jerusalem artichokes out, I've got to dig up the loopings anyway. So I might just dig them up. Because um, yeah, that bed, you know, I've already got asparagus, that's tying that one up. 
these guys is the globe artichokes which again I'm umming and ahhing over because for the amount of room that they take up they are pretty but you know do I want them on the plot with my limited space again this bed here the lupins do I want to keep those for another year and then this bed is my parsnips that I grew earlier this year and then the broad beans that I've just put in working my way down this one is uh, their hollyhocks they had their first year this year so next year we'll get some tall flower spikes which is lovely because that'll be a nice backdrop towards the back end of the plot and then down here that's the garlic coming up there we go look at those chaps lovely and then hopefully for the rest of this bed um, that's usually where I do my squashes and pumpkins so the garlic comes out quite early about June time at which time the squash plants will still be relatively small here so that's my thinking anyway so as you can see that's those five beds lined up they have been tied up quite a bit with flowers and it's the same the perennials as well it sort of seems to be creeping over into this bed as well um, as you can see I've got the chives and the garlic chives are just there I've got the two herbs the mint and the thyme uh, strawberries are there that's a borage plant that will be going very soon and then over here I've got me, uh, me rhubarb and then there's a couple more globe artichokes just because I had the plants so as you can see I'm starting to lose space do you know what I mean this first couple of years this bed was totally empty and this year it's sort of taking over like I say same here with the flowers sort of and then this bed as well is turning into a flower bed so I just want to make sure I don't lose too much room as for the perennials as well moving over here um, yellow leaf plants at the front they are black currants and um, there is a goosegog as well in there gooseberry these uh, sunflowers have had it so they're coming out today and then over here alpine strawberries and raspberries which uh, again have all gone over now if you can see they're all dying off so we'll be looking at uh, trimming back them what are they called the raspberries that's it we're looking at trimming those off they started out just in this corner they've gone the other side of the fence now in towards my shed they started popping up all along this shed and then they've also migrated into this border here as well so yes oh the other thing i wanted to show you as well sunflowers self-seeded as you can see these guys have all but finished now um you know there's one there with a little hoverfly in it so you know they are still providing some benefit but um, yeah these ones they came up quite late and I've never seen a silvery sunflower and the hairs on those leaves are really long I don't know if they'd live and pick it up but they really are very hairy leaves and stems I don't know if it's because they've come up quite late and they're sort of protecting themselves against a the frost but I've never seen that so it'll be quite interesting I think they're probably a bit, uh, a bit gone over a bit late rather to uh, be flowering this year but yeah I've never seen that really really cottony on the stems you see all that fluff definitely a sunflower how bizarre so the seeds that I've grown earlier this year not um, oh they're looking a bit dry actually aren't they so you know they're coming along something's been in there nibbling them by the looks of it so I'll have to have a little investigate around the tray yeah there's signs of insect poo as well who has been eating who would eat seedlings like this let's have a look under the rim ah, I can't see any offending articles these ones appear to be a little nibbled as well probably wood lice would it be wood lice Yes, there are evidence of wood lice. It's that time of year, the food's so scarce now, everything wants a bite of it. So not looking, you know, the best, but definitely still alive. I just need to take some sort of action to protect them a bit better, I think. Yes. What else have we got? We've got spinach. Oh, and the spring onions are up as well. Everything again looking a bit dry and a bit nibbled. I'm going to find a better place to put these, I think, than on the floor. They're a bit exposed. Oh, I've got my other spinach and my rocket, a little bit leggy there, again that could do with lifting up a bit. And finally, finally, 
Uh, cauliflowers, got a couple of those come up. And the sweet peas, they're up. Once they get to three sets of leaves, pinch the top out and it will give you a bushier plant. And the Calvin and Wonder peas as well, something's had a nibble on those. Oh. Well, that sort of prompted me into action on that anyway. So if I want those seedlings oh, to survive, spider web, um, I'm going to have to try and get them off the ground, get them a bit better protected. So I'll probably try and get them onto the staging in here. So I hope that wasn't too spinny around and disorientating. Woo, light. <laughs> Losing the plot today. Oh, here it is. Right, guys, I've uh, started cleaning out some of the greenhouses now. Uh, just started to get some of the uh, dead and dying plants cleaned up. Now, here we've got a, uh, a nice sweet pepper plant. Now, I'm going to give it a go at overwintering. I've not uh, tried it before, but um, I've read all about it, so, you know, it makes me a... Right, guys, I've been uh, cleaning out the greenhouses, uh, trying to get rid of some of them dead and dying plants, just get them all ready, give them a good wash down for uh, the new year. I think the washing will happen next week, though. I think it's just enough. We're just cleaning out the dead stuff at the minute. This here is a lovely sweet pepper plant. Now, I mentioned before about overwintering, potentially. Now, if you want to take a plant like this and overwinter it, I'm just going to run you through what you would need to do. Now, uh, they are perennial pepper plants. Now, in this country, they really do struggle outdoors. Even in a greenhouse, anything much below about, you know, constant 10 degrees, these guys are really not going to make it. So, if you do want to overwinter it, the first thing you've got to think is that you need to be bringing it indoors into your house. So, um, you know, if you've got room for that, maybe a conservatory or uh, a window, something like that, just to try and keep them alive. Uh, the trimming process is quite severe as well. As you can see, this guy's just in a, uh, a little pot here. But he's done really well. He's been harvesting all year. Now, as you can see, I've got the main stem on that guy. Going straight up here. And then that is uh, where I... Can you see? Maybe not. So, main stem coming up. And that's where I trimmed it... Um, when it was first growing to try and bush it out a bit and from there it's grown these two stems coming out now that's all that we want to be looking at really when we're thinking about trimming it back so um, first thing quite severe as I said anything below that first V that can come off so that includes this little side shoot here I don't know if you can see he's gone and then up at the top as well, where that V is, you can see each one of these, I'm trying to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing, there's all leaves and all sorts in the way. So now we've got our main stem, we've got the V, and then off each of those branches, we want to go to the next V. <laughs> I'm just absolutely making sure you can see what I'm on about. Stem, V, and then a second V off there. We want to be going up to the next nodule beyond that second V, if that makes sense. So we're taking that off. And we're taking that off. Again, quite extreme. And then on the other side, get rid of that leaf. We've got a V, and then the second V there. And then we're coming off up here. All the leaves, there go as well. Like I said, very extreme. <laughs> that basically leaves me with that, a twig. So, as you can see, it comes up. First V, second V. If you've not um, topped your plants off at all, you'll just be looking at the one V, but obviously I have done. And that's, that's basically the bit that we're trying to overwinter now. It's got plenty of uh, roots, not root nodules, leaf nodules coming off it. Um, so the next step on that one is just to get it in a slightly bigger pot, put some fresh compost in it, just help it through the winter. So here we go, that's a slightly bigger pot that I'm going to put it into anyway. So we'll just take it out of that one. As you can see, it's got a nice root system on it. And that'll just allow the roots just to grow a bit and have a little bit more nutrients to live in. And there we go, that's your pepper now, ready, uh, repotted and trimmed to uh, give it a go at overwintering, so bring that inside your house and um, keep the soil damp, certainly don't keep it wet, good idea, just put your finger in it, if any soil sticks to it you know that it's nice and wet, if not it's too dry, 
another idea, just pick up the pot and feel it. If it's light, it's dry, if it's heavy, it's wet. Certainly don't need to water them a lot. I'll give them a good watering in now and that'll probably be all it needs for a good month or so. Unless we get any ridiculous weather and that's going on my windowsill at home. Well, I'm just uh, enjoying some of this November sun. It's not something you often hear. It's bonfire night tonight, so I imagine that all the birds that are tweeting now will be singing a different kind of song later on. And all of them fireworks are going off. Um, yeah, work in progress, shall we call it. So all the plants at the back and everything like that have all been cleared up. The floor needs a good sweep and I need to remove all of them out tomatoes and everything like that, stop it getting any diseases and mould. A couple of me uh, patio sizzle, uh, what are they called, chilies, they're still going away. This has been moved out of the doorway now. As you can see it's just self seeded, that was a Cape gooseberry, sometimes called a physalis. And then uh, I've just got some asparagus that's been sitting in pots and uh, a couple of dahlias hiding behind there as well, so that's a bit of a mess I need to sort out. do need to ask you guys a favour actually, begonias, I have never grown one before. But uh, here is one in a pot. What do I do with it now? Does that need cutting back and will it regrow? Or is that just for the uh, for the compost? So if you can let me know on that one and if it does need trimming back, how to trim it back or if I'm meant to cut it up and dig it up, I don't know. So yeah, anyway, a bit of info on that one, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Little greenhouse is uh, empty now. I said all the pots removed. Obviously I mulched some of my beds. Took the canes down in here, but I've not moved my pots yet because I'm lazy. Well, I'm not lazy, I'm just running out of time. Um, and a lot of the pepper plants have started to be uh, pulled back as well. There's the two for overwintering. Um, bit of space freeing up there as well. That's just pots of compost now, they can be thrown onto my beds. So, yes, been busy. Um, as it is though, I'm out of time, so that was just a little quick update as to everything that I'm getting up to on the plot. Thank you very much for all of your comments, likes, subscribes, dislikes, comments and subscribes and all the rest of it. See you later. Enjoy bonfire night. Be safe.